No, uh, that's and that's how many... a, that's that's a very very uh, intriguing and very interesting uh, um, segue about the Social Security and disability. There there's so much. I know there is so much that you have uh, that you have to say and. Uh, I, I wish we had time to, to go so deep into this because I see how emotional it is for you and I see how it has affected your life. Uh, but we do have to go to, to uh, Nancy, but I, I just, I'm sitting here listening, listening to you, listening to your story, and it's just, it, it's intriguing to me and, and, and it is, it, it literally tugs at me. And, and I thank you for, for, for sharing all that. That, that is, uh, that is just, incredible and, and that's meant obviously not not in a, in, in a good way um, it, it's meant that it, to, to it's just it's just unbelievable um, hang on hang on a second there uh, if you will um, uh, Nancy Maney is is also with us there's a a bunch of people here today uh, Nancy Maney is with us and uh, she's the author of uh, my billion year contract the memoir of a former Scientologist which offers a, a bird's eye view into the very secret aspects of the Scientology organization. And Deborah, I, I believe you had a show note about this. I do. Uh, what we're doing in this first segment is to move the stories as fast as we can, and so we're not trying to be rude um, if we you know, sort of move it into the next segment. But it's just that at about um, 8:30 my time, about an hour from now. Uh, everything will open up and we'll have more of an open forum so we can dig deeper into this stuff. And so we also are not taking calls until that open forum part begins because um, other, we, we want everybody to be able to tell their stories. Oh, yes, absolutely. Don't, don't, please don't take that as, as, as trying to not hear what you have to say. We're very interested in what you, hear, you have to say, but we do have a limited amount of time and we have you know X number of people um, that – you know, that are part of the of the show. Right. Um, well, Nancy is unmuted right now, so uh, here Nancy, we go. Nancy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Hey, um, thank you very much for joining us uh, t today, this evening. Uh, we do appreciate your time and, and the attention that you're giving us. I know you're very busy. I did want to ask you one thing. Um, I want to wondering if you would tell us a little bit about your thoughts on uh, child care organizations. Um. First of all, the overall view of child care, and I come first from just being an executive in Scientology, in their lead organization, so they talked about the one where you sign the billionaire contract. And before I became pregnant with my own son, um, there were many situations with children that were in Scientology. Um, there are a litany of horror stories I could share with you, uh, but I won't because one will do. And basically there was, um, in Los Angeles, was the largest concentration of children. So Hubbard decided that the parents, first of all, the parents weren't allowed time to see their children. They got one hour at mealtimes to visit with their children. That's in a 24-hour day, basically seven days a week. That's the amount of parent-child time that was allowed. Wow. So these children are growing up completely unsupervised um, and wild. My um, Hubbard did some investigations into it, and he decided or discovered, quote-unquote, that the parents didn't care about their kids. He never brought up the fact that the parents never had time to see their kids. He just... Um, adjudicated that the parents weren't taking care of their own children. So he started this brand new organization called the Cadet Organization. And this was an organization for children and run by children, sort of like a little Lord of the Flies kind of thing. Um, and these children, Scientology children don't get an education. It's considered that if they study Scientology, that's all they'll need because that's what's really important. So you have these children running wild in the streets of Los Angeles. Um, they had horrific, horrific uh, living situations for the children. 
the children did not sleep with their parents. I mean, they only the parents only had that one hour a day called family time. Um, wow. In did they, did they not time, realize the importance of education and, and nurturing and all that? You know, I've got kids and grandkids. I can't imagine. I can't imagine only spending an hour a day with my children. Children in Scientology are considered adults in little bodies. They are not, they're considered adults in little bodies. When, this is skipping a little bit forward, but the second time I was sent to the Rehabilitation Project Force, the gulag that Sauté talked about, um, I had a two and a half, almost three-year-old son. And my husband and I were both sent under guard to this other building across town where we weren't allowed to even talk to each other, let alone see our son. And our, we were told, we, if we were really good, that after two weeks of being really good, we could see our son for 20 minutes three days out of the week. So basically one hour a week would be allowed. Wow. That, um, that's a, just unconscionable. It, 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 it is. It is, absolutely. I can't even imagine that. I Believe me, I was, my jaw was on the floor, and I was just like, how can, how can I get out of here and go get my son? In trying to get me to stay, these other Scientology women who, I must say, that it's a turn of the words, but they drank the Kool-Aid, shall we say. And they would tell me these stories about how my little boy was really this eternal spiritual being, and he was responsible for his own condition. So if something bad happened to him, it was his fault. This is at the age of two and a half. Oh. And I said, well, I don't Goodness. think so. And she went on to explain to me with her child, when she was three, she got under the kitchen cabinet and into some poison. Now, this was the child's fault because she was a spiritual being and should have known better. Oh, my goodness. And that, that just leaves a door open to all sorts of things. And that is the core bottom line value within Scientology towards children. That leads to an, a better understanding of why abortions are no big deal. It leads to a better understanding of why children are asked to join the contract for a billion years as young as the age of 10. This, the, they are not children, and this is why Katie Holmes was so lucky to have gotten her daughter out of that environment before she became of an age in which she would be indoctrinated. Um, we did escape. My husband and I did escape the next day, and it wasn't easy to do and as of this time period right now as we speak there are people locked up across the world in these thought reform camps and while we were under guard and had to really do a whole master plan to get out of there to go get our son back these people can't even do that there are cameras everywhere doors are locked everywhere wow they, you know, the security on keeping like them a prison. in it sounds is, like a prison. It is a prison. It is a prison. And it's a prison in America. It's a prison in England. It's a prison in Australia. And a lot of people that arrive in this prison are the children that joined at 10, 12 years old and then didn't do well. So they're sent for punishment into these prison systems. And basically, mm. more like a thought reform camp. Yes, you're under guard and everything, and it is a prison, but it's, you're meant to be there until your thoughts are better, until you're thinking wow. like the group wants you to think. So I had this one friend of mine who more recently than I uh, is, came out of the, the organization. He had an experience in the Rehabilitation Project Force. He had been kept in there for seven years. Seven years. That's like, I mean, don't manslaughter people get seven years? It's almost like your soul would die 
in something. You know what I mean? Uh, for me, it's amazing that people can even find hope and find that inner strength to even get out of it when, if they're well, in a camp like that that long. Absolutely. When you're, Just, hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And this individual said, oh, it was okay because it wasn't really like a prison because I could have left it any time. And I messaged him privately and I said, I don't know what RPF you were in, but I could never leave when I wanted to. And he thought a bit, and he wrote back, and he said, yeah, there was that time those three guys tackled me when I wanted to leave. And then he listed a litany of these various times that he wanted to leave but was physically prevented from leaving. And it is physical prevention. It's not all this, oh, they just have you there because you're brainwashed or something. No, there's also the physical of it and the threat of, as Fate so clearly described, your entire family is held hostage. If wow. you ever want to see your family again, you got to do the program. Does Child Protective Services try to um, help these kids or Yeah, not? yeah that's a good question. Okay, good, that's, Child yeah, Protective yeah. comes back into their espionage networks. Um, they've got people, they've has got people five, in there. Pardon? They've got people within the Child Protective Services. They have it covered. That's what they would call it. We have okay. that covered, which means either somebody's in there or they have a tap on their phones or whatever. But I ran the daycare center. I ran, um, I was in charge of, I mean, building code violations up the yin-yang. We're talking on an international basis. Yet every time the Board of Health or the Child Protective Agency was coming, they would know about it usually 48 hours in advance. And they do this quick cleanup and add more staff if it was the child care organization so it would look like it was up to code. And the same with the buildings. And when they had the prison camp in the garage at the uh, main building in Florida, uh, it was housed within this car garage but with just plywood to make kind of walls. Mm, no okay. one would imagine that there's 40 people living on the other side of this plywood. So when the health so this, inspect, when the it health looked just like a regular garage. There was nothing to it even. Like a regular garage, yeah. and when they knew the health inspectors were coming, they would clean everybody out of that area, and they'd put all these old mattresses up around the doorways. So the inspectors would go by, and the people giving them the tour would just say, oh, yeah, that's just storage. Now, who is going to think 40 people are stuck living inside that place? Good grief. Uh, uh, oh, my God. This, I, I don't even know what to say about that. That is, I mean, what are the sanitary conditions in there? Horrific. I mean, the children in Los Angeles constantly had lice. I mean, this is one of the reasons why they do not allow... Uh, small children in the C organization anymore um, because, I mean, babies have, babies have died. Children have died. Mm. Um, the conditions not only for the education but cleanliness and hygiene and, you know, um, changing of diapers. Or Good grief. That just makes my stomach royal. Uh, Nancy, 